Take your Bible with me, dear friends. Come with us as we continue to study the book of Colossians. Book of Colossians, chapter 3. Today we'll be studying another deep subject. I'll just like to go over and not try to hurt intentionally anyone. There's no way that you can not get hurt when the Word of God is preached. The Word of God is preached. Uh, we don't come to church to get ourselves just to be encouraged. The church is like a hospital where you come to get well. Amen? It's like a garage where you bring your car for servicing. Um, it's not a beauty parlor where you come to put makeup while you are not there inside, but you come to do that outside just to make yourself. So church is not a beauty parlor. Beauty parlor is good to make you look beautiful, to make you presentable. Uh, it's good. To, uh, it is good. But church is not like that. Church, we don't paint your face here to make you feel good. Church is a place where your tire, if it is not fine, we pump the air in. Amen? Uh, if your steering is not, we, we try to do something. Or if there is some rust in you, we scrub you and make you polish. Amen? That is church. <laughs> so we come to church to get servicing. Or we come to church to get right. Or well, if you are sick, spiritually sick, we come to take some paracetamol. And that's the word of God. So, um, Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3. Um, we're going to spe especially look into four different types of people today. And it is specifically for Christians. In fact, the book of Colossians is written to the Christians. And, uh, and we are going to see certain things. And while studying this, there are three words that came out. And maybe we just look into that word and make up the whole sermon. And before we get into the message, uh, may I request you to honor God's word as we read. Would you please stand, men of God and women of God. Uh, book of Colossians, Epistles to the Colossians, chapter 3, verse number 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 through 25. The Bible says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. In all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another. In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Wives. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing. Unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as man pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive. For the wrong which he has done. 
and there is no respect of persons. Shall we call the Lord in prayer? Our dearest loving Heavenly Father, teach us today. Help us not to present ourselves as great Christians who make no flaws. But we realize and we understand and we accept that we are all easy to fall, weak, need to learn, and we all make mistakes. And it is through your, thy word, O God, that we come to know the truth. And it is thy word that straightens our lives. Help us to be humble, to accept us. Help us to love thy word. And help us to apply the message today to our hearts, so we may walk according to thy word. Give us all a receptive heart and an alert mind. Father, fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Give me the words of utterance. Cover me behind thy cross, so that Jesus Christ may be glorified. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. There are two sermons, there are two titles of the sermons that I've never touched in my life for more than two times. This is the second time that I would ever preach about family or marriage, a kind of a full sermon, in all the nine years. I believe you're a good Christian if you're humble and if you want and if you love the Lord. You don't need to be motivated always to have a good. A good Christian will be a good husband. A good Christian will be a good wife. A good Christian will be a good children. Unlike today, a lot of churches, all that they have is family conferences. Because that makes people more exciting. Today, end time conferences, family conferences. But I believe... If you are committed to live and love the Lord, you don't need to be told all the time, a good Christian will be a good husband. I believe that. A good Christian will be a good wife. And a good Christian will be a good child. But there are times that we need to be reminded. The Bible says, put them into remembrance. And perhaps this is the second time that I would like to preach. There's one more sermon that I've never preached except one. And while studying the book of Galatians, and that's in regard to giving, in regard to finance. And, uh, but we are going to touch that also before we finish this book on money. But today, we'll talk about the family. We'll talk about a few things what God wants us to know. It's not so easy to talk about family. Two years ago... I was not married. So everyone said, you don't understand about marriage. I mean, people in the church. Pastor, I don't think you understand. Not on my face, but behind and gossiping and all this thing. I don't think he understands about us. He is not married, so he does not understand about marriage. Fine. Then I got married. <laughs> And I got married and then people started saying, you don't understand about children. You don't have children, so you don't understand about parents. And so, me and my wife, we asked God and he gave us a child. <laughs> then people started talking, you just have one child and so you don't understand about raising up too many children. So we prayed and now we are having the second child coming. <laughs> And then another problem is, you don't understand about children. You don't have a child of my age. I think I have spiritual children who is one year old and some are 70 years old, some are 60 years old, some are 40 years old. And I have about 80 children here. Amen? The pressure is more than what every father and mother will be having it in the home. The pressure is more. Many a times you hear from outside, he said that, she said this, about the pastor. 
the pressure is low. But then you take it to the Lord, come before the Lord, put a smile on your face and love everyone. If you wish to be my disciple, take up your cross daily and follow me. Amen. If you want to wear a crown in heaven, my beloveds, you better be ready to wear a thorn on earth. Christ was crowned with a crown of thorns. And if you want to have a mansion in heaven, of course you will have, whether you want or not, if you are saved, you will have, because God promised it. But if you want praises in heaven and crowns in heaven, you better be ready to carry your cross daily on earth. The Bible says the Lord reveals the secret to his servants. He reveals. No matter how much he discovered. And God reveals the truth from the scripture. Today, as we study this scripture, let us just open up our hearts and minds and say, I don't think I'm a best husband. I confess that. I don't think I'm the best husband. You can ask my wife. She knows all my sins. And I definitely believe my wife is not the best wife. She will confess. And we all make mistakes. And we all learn. We all grow. We learn by falling. We learn through mistake. We learn when we are taught. Amen. Sometimes we are taught by other Christian families. Sometimes we are taught by the preaching of God's word. Sometimes we are taught by children. In fact, we are, just, we, we, we are just very careful of what we do in front of my son because he copies everything, the scary thing. He copies, and children, they copy everything what the parents do. And many a time, the children are best teachers. I'm sure parents agree with that. Children are the best teachers. The Bible says here, before we get into that, verse number 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And so even when someone comes here and sings, they are actually teaching us. They are admonishing us. And when we sing, we are actually teaching others. And we are admonishing others. But more than that, we are worshipping the Lord and praising the Lord. How wonderful it is to be reminded how great our God is. How higher and, and greater, uh, how beautiful He is. And the Bible says that when we sing, we need to sing with grace. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. A congregational singing. We got to sing with grace. Joyfully. Understanding what God has done. We sing the hymns. It's all doctrinal hymns that we sing from the hymn books. And then we sing psalms. And spiritual songs. What well, the choir presented today was not a hymn. It was a spiritual song. The songs that we sang in Hindi were psalms today. And so, we need to do all this thing with grace in our hearts to the Lord with joy. And sometimes, you might have gone through all the, time, all the things of sorrow throughout this week. And you come with sorrow in your heart. And your heart is filled with sorrow and it's not possible to be happy. But you can still have grace in your sorrows. And you sing to God. God is not saying singing, sing with happiness. He says sing with grace. Because he knows there may be people today sitting here may have sorrows in your heart. And yet you sing with grace knowing the favor that God has bestowed upon each one of us. Amen. A spirit-filled Christian. A spirit-filled Christian. 
Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. That's the preaching of God's word. Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. A lot of people want to pee tonight. I mean this morning when I'm preaching. Next Sunday I'll bring buckets in front. I don't think you'll be going around during you. Classes, right? Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Why are we singing? We're singing it to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And whatsoever you do in word or deed... Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. And when the Word of God admonishes in this manner about praising God and singing and learning and teaching, then the Bible tells wives. Why is wives first? Ladies, I want you to know, sincerely, I love you very much in the Lord. And you should not take anything as personal or offensive. But if you take offensive, that's fine. The Bible is an offensive book. It's a double-edged sword. It cuts both the side. Look into the world what has happened today. Being a man, I'm not trying to justify the things that is done. Men are terrorists. Well, why does the Bible say wives first before the husband? Why not put the husband first? Because there was a day, there were two lovers, and they wanted to die. And so they planned to, to commit suicide. So they went on top of the mountain. They saw down, it's a big, it's a, it's a, a large pit down there and if you just jump you would die. And so the girl and the boy went up and said, we are going to die because there's so much of opposition for us to get married. So, here's a story behind ladies first. God says ladies first here. Wives. It's really an interesting story though. I don't know whether it's true or not. Long time ago, a man and a woman were madly in love. They wanted to marry, but parents did not approve. So they decided to suicide together and plan to jump from a mountain. The man could not bear to see his sweetheart fall. So he convinced her that he will jump first. And he jumped. He died. But the girl never jumped. Thereafter all men decided to say, ladies first. <laughs> Husband sent a text to a wife at night. Hey babe, I will get late. Please try and wash all my dirty clothes and make sure you prepare my favorite dish before I return. There was no reply. <laughs> he sent another text. Babe, I forgot to tell you that I got an increase in my salary at the end of the month. I'm getting you a new car. She texts back. Oh my gosh, really? Husband replied, no, I just wanted to make sure you got my first message. <laughs> The newly wed wife said to her husband when he returned from work, I have great news for you. Pretty soon we are going to be three in this house instead of two. Her husband ran to her with a smile on his face and delight in his eyes. He was glowing of happiness and kissing his wife when she said, I'm glad that you... And, and she said... 
I'm glad that you feel this way since tomorrow morning my mother moves in with us. <laughs> At my granddaughter's wedding, the DJ, not my granddaughter, somebody wrote, the DJ polled the guests to see who had been married longest. It turned out to be my husband and I, someone said. The DJ asked, what advice would you give to the newly married couple? He asked the lady, what advice would you give to the newly married couple? The lady said, the three most important words in a marriage are, you are probably right. Everyone then looked at her husband and he said, she is probably right. That's the best way to keep the marriage going. Amen? Wife said, what are you doing? Husband said, nothing. Wife said, nothing? You have been reading our marriage certificate for an hour. Husband said, I was looking for expiration date. <laughs> Wife, do you want dinner? Husband, sure. What are my choices? Wife, yes or no. <laughs> God saw me hungry, he created pizza. He saw me thirsty and he created Pepsi. He saw me in dark, he created light. He saw me without problem, he created you. <laughs> I wrote your name on sand, it, wa it got washed. I wrote your name in the air, it was blown away then. I wrote your name on my heart and I got a heart attack. <laughs> Watch out for the wall. At the end of the funeral service, the Paul, <laughs> the Paul bearers are carrying the casket out. <laughs> when they accidentally bumped into a wall jarring the casket, they hear a faint moan. They open the casket and find that the woman is actually alive. She lives for 10 more years and then dies. A ceremony is again held at the same place. And at the end of the ceremony, the pallbearers are again carrying out the casket. As they're walking, the husband cries out, Watch out for the wall! <laughs> that was just to have a light moment. The Bible says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. As it is fit in the Lord. We thank God for wives in our lives. I tell you, without wives, our life would be miserable. Look at these guys who are not married. Look at them. How pathetic. <laughs> look at them, how they look. <laughs> look at them, their condition. <laughs> thank God for wives. <laughs> look at my shirt, it's ironed. Look at me, I still look healthy. <laughs> Thank God for wives. They cook good food for you. They take care of you. They love you. Thank God for wives. At the same time, no one in this world can say, I don't have problem at all. Everyone lives with a problem. Everyone has a problem. Right? Everybody in this world has a problem. No one in this world can say, I don't have a problem. I met someone this week, and that person seemed to be very exciting and happy. I said, wow. So what really makes you so happy all the time? That person said to me, brother, it's a secret of my life. There's a mystery in my life. I have constant battle every day. But I made a decision to be happy no matter what. So everyone has a problem. The Bible says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Thank God for that, isn't it, ladies? The Bible says, submit yourself unto your own husbands. Praise the Lord. You don't have to submit to any man. You don't have to submit to anybody. 
as an individual. You just submit to your own husband. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. It's fit in the Lord. What if the husband is living a life of wickedness and torturing your lives against the will of God, against Bible? What do you do? Is it fit in the Lord? No. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Why the Bible uses the wives to first addressing the wives, ladies first, why? We go right back to Genesis. We go right back to Genesis. The main cause of the fall was because there was lack of submission. Ladies, God made you beautiful. God made you strong. God gave you brains. But at the same time, the devil is very close. Because he knows if he can get you, he can ruin everything. That's serious. Look at the world today. Look at what is happening in the world today. Everything is against the Bible. The devil is getting the ladies more than the children. The world, in the present world today is in chaos which started in Genesis. With Eve. What happened to Eve? If Eve had to be with her husband, she would have not get cheated by or, or beguiled by the devil. She would have not. But she said, hey, come on. I know I got to be submissive to you. But I want my space. I want to do what I want. You know, I don't have to do everything that you say. He says, give me, a, give me my space and I want you just, just, just go and take a walk. And Satan, the one who was just waiting to pounce on her, got her. The lust of the eyes. The lust of the flesh. And the pride of life. It looks so good. Delightful to the eyes. If I eat, I'll become wise. Pride of life. I'll become like God. And the devil deceived the first woman. He got her. Right from the beginning, we see the chaos and the catastrophe in nations and in homes. But we thank God. We thank God for the ladies, mothers, Wives, sisters, daughters who are committed to give up their pride, who are committed to obey the word of God, who are committed to say, I know my flesh don't like this, but I want to do it for the Lord. We thank God for such women. They are the one who makes our life so good. They are, one, they are the one who makes us, who present ourselves in such a way where people can respect us. Thank God for godly mothers, godly wives, godly sisters, and godly girls. Thank God. And while we pray such thing, I want every woman to think back of in your mind. And every young girl's to think this in your heart and mind. That you are not called to boss around 
If you are a Christian, you must. I, I don't like this, Pastor. I know you don't like it. There are so many things in the Bible. I don't like it. I wish I had my own ways. But I love to do it. And I'm trying to obey. Because God said. And God is right all the time. My flesh may not like us. But because God is right all the time. And he never makes a mistake. And he wrote it in the Bible. We need to do it. Because we know we are weak and foolish. And God is all wise. And he told the right thing to us. Amen. Amen. Wives, submit yourselves. Because it's difficult for wives to submit in this day and age. And God knows it from the beginning. He tried in the first time he gave a wife to this man, Adam. He gave a woman. And God saw that the first one what the first one did disobeyed God and then God sees that's what is happening today everyone wants to have their own ways dad, mom, you don't tell me what to do husband, you don't tell me what to do big brother, you don't tell me you're not my protector God doesn't think so. God thinks, wives, God thinks you need a protector. Wives, God thinks you need a leader. You cannot be a leader. God thinks. And God is right. Whether you accept what I'm saying or not, God is always right. And you and I are wrong, and so we need to obey God. Ladies, if you agree with me, even if you don't agree with me, it's, it, deep down, it's difficult to submit. What does submission mean? What does submission mean? Submit is to give over and yield to the power or authority of another. You means you have no right over your body, you have no right over anything, you just submit to another. That is submit means. You submit to your own husband. You have no right. It's mine. No, it's not yours. It's your husband. You belong to your husband. You got to submit. Now this is not written to unbelievers. It's written to believers. Believing Christ, uh, wives. Christian wives. You don't belong to yourself. You belong to your husband whom God put it. Why today there are problems in churches? Why today problems in nations? Abortion has been legalized very soon. In, look at some of the things that's going on in India. One day, a few years ago, when things were like, I cannot talk this thing. Today it's openly talked. By the ladies on the street. Everyone wants to do their own ways. But God has a good advice for all of us. Good advice, wise advice. And when God says He's not giving an option. Wives, if you want, please submit. Then you will be fine. God is not. God just says, wives, submit. It's mandatory. It's compulsory. This is the command of God. I love God. But I don't submit. You are not loving God. You cannot love a God whom you cannot see when you cannot submit to the one you do see. You're getting it? I love God, but I cannot obey my, or submit to my husband. If you cannot submit, then you don't love your God. And 
and wives. Submit yourselves unto your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. He's not telling you go around and submit to all the men. Thank God for that. He is telling you to submit to your own husband. He thinks your husband is more wiser than you. Let me tell you that. You accept it or not. Your husband is more wiser than you. God made him like that. You may, think, you may be thinking he's a fool or, or, or he may not be wise. No, no, no. God thinks he's wise. And that's why God made him a leader. And that's why God made him your husband. God thinks. And God thought it was fit to do that way. It's difficult in this day and age. It's difficult. But if you love God, you will do it. To your own husband. Why? To help the family to be in harmony. When a wife submits to the husband, you know what happens? It's easy for children to obey the parents. Amen? It's very easy for the children to obey the parents. Husband, love your wives. So what we see that submit means to give over or yield to the power or authority of another. What if he does something foolish? What if your husband does something foolish? God will take care of it. God is watching. And he'll take care of it. I don't, not everyone will like such messages. But God likes it. And God wants this way. What is the problem from the beginning? Authority. Why was the war? Authority. I want to be like God. So I'll, I'll go above the sky and above the stars. And I'll, I'll make my throne up there. And I'll, I, I want to be like God. I want to submit to God. A anointed cherub was created by God. Now rebels against God. Authority problem. I don't want to submit to God. It's right from the beginning. It's about the kingdom. It's about the throne. It's about the authority. It's about submissiveness. You can have a beautiful life if we would try to obey and just try to obey what the Bible says. Husband, love your wives and be not a beater against them. Love and bitter. Love is sweet. Hatred is bitter. Why God says, husband, love your wives? Why Bible doesn't say, wives, you love your husband? God expects women to, wives to submit and husband to love your wives. Husbands, there may be times in our lives it's difficult. You may have so much of things on your head and your shoulder. And you may not feel like. But Bible want, God, God wants you to instigate love. You are the one who should instigate love in your wife. You are the one who need to love your wife. And if the husband loves the wife, as God wants you to love your wife, she will have no problem in submitting to you. My wife, don't submit to me. Are you loving the way that God wants you to love your wife? Just like the way. If you love your wife the way that God wants you to love, then she will submit. She will have no problem. Ladies, am I right? Amen. It's true. And ladies, if you would submit to your husband the way that 
God wants you to submit, husband has no problem to love. But just because the wife doesn't submit doesn't mean you don't love her. You can stimulate her by loving and she will submit to you. Love will stimulate your wives to submit to you. And wives, when you submit to your husband, it will stimulate him to love you. It's both the way. Marriage is not 50-50, it's 100-100. It's easy for me to speak on submission because not, not trying to be proud of this thing, but just, just for an example. I'm sure I would have not have any other better wives than my wife Grace when it comes to submissiveness. And so it's, it makes me a little bit easy and, un, and comfortable to speak on these things. She's a very submissive woman. She's a submissive wife. In fact, before I got married, some people told me, hey, no man, you, don't, you should not marry American wives. They will never submit to you. They are very... No, that's different. Christian ladies are not different. No matter where, Bible is one. Amen? And so it's easy. I'm sure it's difficult for her, but it makes me it makes easy for me to love her. And so husbands, we are called to instigate love in our wife. She may not be in good mood. She may not be happy. But we can make her loved. Maybe saying that you love her. Maybe appreciating on some things what she did. There are a few languages of love. A language of touch. Thank you, sweetheart. She feel loved. Everyone, every wife want to be loved by their husband. And if we love them, they have no problem in submitting to us. There's no problem at all. And so God is saying, husband, you're the instigator. You should instigate love in your wives. You need to tell her, remind her that you love her. You need to show her that you love her, maybe with your kind words and appreciation or maybe gifts. These things will enable the family. And this is actually putting a good, uh, good mark on the children that's born to us. They look at the parents. They say, I want to be, I want to grow up like my dad who loves my mom and I want to love my wife when I grow up. The daughter will say, I want to be like my mom and be submissive and be submissive to my husband when I grow up and marry. I want a husband like my dad. I want a wife like my mom. Christian character. And it is difficult, dear friends. It's not so easy. It takes works. Two different characters. Two, like before marriage, everybody like, you know, we all want to get married, right? After marriage, like, why did I get married, man? <laughs> hey, let me tell you, young guys, it's better to say, I wish I got married and stay single <laughs> than to get married and, I, and say, I wish I never got married. And so you start praying now. 
Because behind that mountain out there, there's a beautiful, oh, maybe inside this room, <laughs> there's a beautiful girl that God is preparing for you. And you get messed up with any unbeliever, God will mess your life. You take my words. You think you can change? If you can't change it now, you will never be able to change then. You better be careful. Girls, before you get married, you see that you introduce that guy to your father, and that guy should spend at least one month with your father, and he will take personal interviews. Sure. And then if your father is happy, introduce that guy to me. <laughs> and I'll take some personal interviews. Don't you ever do anything without your father knowing it. It's dangerous. There are so many ladies who wet their pillows in tears for the wrong decision that they made for not seeking the will of God. Husband's love. And if you're not ready to love your wives, then you better don't get married. Because there are already enough trouble in this world and we don't want you to make it more. Husbands, love your wives. And be not bitter against them. Why God says be not bitter against them? Because it's possible to be bitter against a wife. Because guys, ladies... You have this problem, right? You keep on nagging. <laughs> My wife is gone, so I can say something now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you may have some discussion and then, and then you may be sitting there and thinking, what are you thinking now? <laughs> what are you thinking? And, and you may say something and then it's again and again and again and you may like, stop. It can make you bitter. And God already knows. Maybe there are other reasons that you may know better which can cause you to be bitter against your wife but God says this, even if it is such a way that will make you bitter, please don't get bitter. He says, love your wives and don't be. Don't be is a command. Don't be bitter. Because the Bible says she's a weaker vessel. In fact, you husband to be the priest in your home, even when your wife makes a mistake, you uplift her. Through your Christian character, by your love that you show, a genuine love. Someone says another word for marriage is adjustment. Adjusting. You just said, just understand. Compromise with your husband. Compromise with your wife. When it fits in the word of God. Amen? Understanding. Sometimes giving up. I'm a husband, how can... Yeah, come on. Give up something to make her happy. It's okay to give up some of your rights to make your wife happy. To make her... Feel loved. I think these two words, submit and love, are husbands and wife. Love is the husband, submit is the wife. And if love loves the submit, submit the submit will submit to the love. You getting it? The husband and wives.
husband love your wives and be not bitter against them why because it's possible to be bitter but it's the decision and commitment that you make nothing belongs to you wives everything belongs to your husband what belongs to you and husbands nothing belongs to you everything belongs to your wives that belongs to you giving up to have a beautiful marriage life but at the same time don't compromise on sin oh my wife likes to drink i'll give up my rights no my husband likes to drink i'll give up my rights no husbands is the holy spirit dwelling in you wife is the holy spirit dwelling in you do you know what you're doing to your body wife your body is your husband's body and husband your body is your wife's body and so we are called to love our wives just like we would love ourselves how many of us like to take a blade and some of a crazy oh you are in love you crazy little idiots hurting you like a roman catholic pope who is hurting his self to earn salvation i think if we make a proper commitment to the lord and a proper decision before the lord and say lord i want to be a good husband lord i want my wife to know that i love her genuinely and passionately and if every wife goes and prays to the lord i know my husband is weird but i want to submit to him I know he doesn't understand but I want to submit to him lord and because of your genuine prayer and your decision and commitment god will work in your husband's life and god will work in your wife's life it's true but what god wants to see is your heart whether it's genuine genuine we may not like to hurt our children but sometimes it's so easy to hurt our wives we may not want to hurt our children but so easy to hurt our husbands remember even there are so many christians in this world christian families living like the world and we need godly families to shine in this dark world where the world will see and say wow look at that family recently a guy went into a black church in america in north carolina he was bitter and hung, uh, angry from his childhood and took his gun and he went and he shot the people dead in the church and they lost their beloveds and you know what those people who lost their beloveds are doing they're saying i forgive you you killed my daughter she has been one of the most beautiful loving child and you killed my daughter and it hurts me but i still forgive you i mean look at those people I don't know what I would do. If someone would hurt my wife and my son, I would perhaps kill him and then go to God and say, "Lord, I'm sorry." Look at these people. Willing to forgive and say, "Hey, 
you can come to our church and join us. I, I, I was hearing this and watching this video about some of the families who lost their beloveds are forgiving him on live television. Christians. I mean, it takes genuine walk with the Lord for such thing. And if such character is induced inside every husband and wife to love and to forgive and to keep going, I think a lot of good will happen in our families. Amen? Amen. Children, obey. Obey your parents. In all things. In all things. He tells you, you cannot wear that clothes. Obey him. Your mom says you should not put your hair this way. Obey. In all things. I, I still remember when I was small. And I had some of my favorite things to wear. And my mom or my dad would say, no, you cannot wear this. You need to wear that. And I would feel bad. I would cry. Because I wanted to wear the one that I wanted. And that's rebelliousness. And I was not saved then. We were Catholics. But the, now we know what the Bible says. And God says, you obey your parents in all things. What if your parents saw you not reading your Bible and they call you up and say, Son, daughter, I didn't see you read your Bible. Read your Bible today. Come on, right in front of me. What do you do? Obey. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Obey. Why? Because the Bible says, because it is right. Ephesians chapter 6. Turn, turn. I'll tell you how you should have long life. If you want to die early, rebel. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 4, uh, chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 1, 2, and 3. And while you turn, let me tell you, your parents knows better than you in everything. Everything. Dad, you don't understand. He understands everything. Mom, you don't know. She knows everything. You are fool. You are called to obey your mom. You are called to obey your dad. Amen? Amen. Why? It's good for you. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. It's right to obey, God says. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. There is a promise for obeying and honoring your parents. And this is the first commandment with promise. There's no other this is the first commandment with promise when you obey and honor your parents that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. It will be well with you and you will live long. God says, this is right, this is right. Just obey. Let me tell you, dear boys and girls, Children, you actually have no choice as long as your father and mother takes care of you and feeds you. And as long as you are not married or as long as you don't work, you have no choice. You obey your parents in everything. No choice. Just obey. And by the way, they make the right choice for you. And even if they are wicked, they will not do any wickedness for you. They love you. 
This morning before we came, we had to give medicine to my son. And when he sees the medicine bottle, he runs away. And he cries. He doesn't like medicine. Even though it is sweet. But he sees. And what we had to do? My wife has to hold his hands and legs. And I have to hold his face and press. Open his mouth and pour the bottle. Pour the, not the bottle. <laughs> pour the medicine. <laughs> pour the medicine and hold on to his mouth in that way for a few seconds. Until everything is gone down the throat. Because if I leave, he'll spit it out. He keeps it. He wants, he knows, he wants to spit. So I had to hold him. And he cries and cries. You know why we are doing? Not because we hate him. Because we want him to get right, get well soon. It hurts to see your children sick. And we do that. Why? Because we love our children. Sometimes when such things happen, children may think, my parents don't love me. They love you, dear beloveds. They love you very much. In fact, your parents will do anything for you. Amen? Fathers, amen? amen. Mothers, amen? amen? Some of you are quiet. <laughs> you hate your children? No. This is well pleasing unto the Lord. It pleases the Lord. There are few things that pleases the Lord. Faith pleases the Lord. Obedience to your parents pleases the Lord. Wow. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Because mothers have a very soft corner. And so God says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger. Sometimes in our anger we can say a few words that will hurt and, and leave a lasting stigma on the child. And hence we need to take care of our words. Some parents, when I read some of the things why children did some things that are not right to do, this ring, when father said to the child, you're just like a pinch of a salt. You're just worth a pinch of a salt. That's all. Oh, we just, you just, you were just born by chance. We don't cho- make a choice. And these are very, very bad things to say to your children growing up. That will, that will, Stir anger in them. Fathers. Provoke not. Don't compare your children with the others. <laughs> Look at the neighbor's son. He is better than you. Who do, they, who do you think you are? You're causing hurt in your children. Look, she sings better than you. No. You're not supposed to. Never compare your children with other children. Your children are special and unique and precious. Don't you ever compare your children with somebody. Look, she's beautiful than you. No, you are beautiful. You're the most beautiful. And if you're a Christian woman, you're the most beautiful woman in this world. You are. We are never supposed to compare our boys and our daughters with our neighbor's children or anybody's. Oh, my son did not get the first class. Look at your neighbor's son. They got first. So what? He did the best that he could. How can we expect everyone to get the first? They worked hard. Never do that with your own children. Never provoke your children with anger. 
let them know that you think that they are very special and precious and important. Appreciate them. Praise them. Spank them. Don't you ever stop spanking. Even if they say, they'll go and complain to the police. When, they, when you come out, continue to spank. <laughs> I know a son telling the mother, if you beat me, I'll tell the police. I was late. I would have slapped him on the face at that moment if he had slapped in front of me. Too much of television news. We're watching only news. And what is in the news? Oh, my t- the teachers did this to my children and they went and complained. Or oh, the parents, the fathers scolded and spanked. The, the child left the house. And what the media shows is everything against the authorities today. That's what the media does because media is from the Satan. I know I was watching one day a news and on the CNN news what I saw is they put a secret camera how they entered into the house, who did it, maybe that wicked son did it. And they had a secret camera inside the house where the mother sits with the children giving them homeschooling. And when the son is not, the mother is disciplining. Maybe giving a pinch. And they got this on the camera. And it's all on the CNN. Look at the mothers. How wrong they are. Media Wants to ruin authority. And the devil controls the media. So if you have a TV. I'm not against it. You better know who is controlling you. Are controlling the remote. Or the remote is controlling you. See what the name of the remote is. Remote controller. Which means he controls you. Give a remote control to a man. Who controls? The remote control controls the man. He is never satisfied watching one channel. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Who controls? And wife? She wants to watch that 9.30 program. That controls. No, you don't watch football. I just want to watch this. What do you think problems today in families? Watching that Kabi Saas Bi Bhavati. Because in that you get the best ideas and the best techniques how to put the daughter in law down and how to do the mo- how to put the mother in law down. The program shows you how to do it. Like in every program I'm sure the, the mother in law will be hiding behind the wall once the daughter in law leaves the ha- kitchen. So she goes and puts extra salt in the curry. So the husband comes hungry, hungry, and the food is very salty. He gets mad at the wife. So the fight. That's the soap operas. <laughs> so programs today. 8.30, 9.30, 8 o'clock it starts, right? We don't have TV, but I've been watching before. Now I don't know what's happening, but I'm sure that now it's more bad. 8 o'clock it starts, right? Nikit? You don't know. Good. You're a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> Eight, eight thirty, nine, nine thirty, ten. Media controls you, remote controls you. A man will sit and he will change to 150 channel and he's never happy. There's nothing in the TV. <laughs> and woman sits in front of the uh, t- TV. That's all that she wants. The remote has controlled her life. The remote has controlled the man's life. It's not wrong to have TV. There's so many wonderful things to learn from. But just so you know, the, to- the, the, the TV is the toilet glass. It's a toilet glass. All that you see is filthy. So you make a choice. What you are watching. What you're watching. Think about the cricket. Today nobody will go to watch cricket match. People have learned that cricket match is boring today. Nobody will watch cricket match. But why they go there? 
Every time there is a four, every time there is a six, every time there is a catch. Who are those girls? Cheerleaders. With all the filthy, seductive clothes. You watch. Program sometimes may be good. But it's a commercial that destroys the mind. You cannot buy a toothpaste. You cannot sell a toothpaste without a woman dressing with the seduct. Why, why you want a woman with that kind of to sell a toothpaste? I don't understand. Everybody brush. Toothpaste, even mint. Mint chocolate, 50 paisa chocolate. Sex sells. Sex sells. That's business today. Oh. You still have 30 minutes. So children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. So parents, go home today as the best parents in the world. Children, go home today as the best child in the world. Husband, go home today as the best husband in the world. Wives, go home today as the best wives in the world. Bachelors, suffer. No, I'm just... (laughs) No. Happy. Enjoy your life as much as you can. Your day is also coming very soon. (laughs) Servants obey in all things. It's the same thing like children. When you're working for a boss, you're working for somebody, you do it even in flesh. Servants obey in all things, your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as man pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. You fear God. And so you will submit to your father. You fear God. So you will submit to your husband. You fear God. So you will love your wife. You fear God. So you will submit to your boss. What are you doing brother at your job? I'm witnessing. No that's not your job. You don't witness during working. You work. You work. And then you witness. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto man. Do it unto the Lord. And church, as a husband and wives and children, when we love each other and submit to each other, there's something that the Bible also tells us to do. And this is something you don't like. I love the Bible. But I don't like this chapter. Is it? You need to love everything. Amen? Amen. Come to Hebrews chapter 13. Before we close. I don't submit to me anybody. I don't fear anybody. I'm... Okay. Hebrews chapter 13. Verse number 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such thing as you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. So that we may be boldly say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Verse number 7. Remember them which have the rule over you. Who have spoken unto you the word of God. Whose faith follow Considering the end of their conversation. Verse number 17. Obey them. It comes to the ones who preach. Maybe pastors, elders, evangelists. The one who feeds you the word of God. So remember them so you can pray. Then obey them. Obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls. As they that must give account. That they may do it with joy. And not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. When the church would submit. To the pastor. Or to the elder. To the one who teaches and preaches. 
There won't be tussles. There will be a smooth harmony, just as it is in the home, between husband and wife, between the children and the father, between the children and the parents. It's the same thing in the church. The church and the leaders will be harmony. Obey them that have rule over you. An elder that preaches has rule over you. You, you like it or not. But he's not going to have rule over your personal life. But on your spiritual matter. Obey them that have rule over you. And submit yourselves for they watch for your souls. As they that must give account. That they may do it with joy. And not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. Verse number 24. Salute all them that have rule over you. And all the saints. They of Italy salute you. Salute. It's good to come over. Or it's good to say thank you pastor. One day one, one, one man said, Hey brother, I have these things in my church, man. I don't understand why. Some of my church members never come and say thank you or wish me. And I try to give the best to them. It never happens. But then when a guest preacher comes and preaches, from backside they'll rush to the guest preachers. Why is that? <laughs> it's always there. It's always like that. Salute them. Salute all them that have the rule over you. No, he should come to me. You stinking rotten, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Give up. Some stubbornness. Give up certain things that edifies your flesh. Humble. So dear friends, it's all about loving, submitting, and obeying. Help your families. Go home today. Or maybe even before going home, tell your wife, I love you. And look at the smile on her face that will brighten her day. And submit to your husband. Just as you would submit to the Lord. And see how he will shower the praises and, and appreciations and love over you. This is true. And let us submit to one another. And may this church be a great testimony and a lighthouse to the world. Can I hear an amen? amen. Shall we pray?